Hello everybody and welcome to new video on this channel. This video will be about installing ESP IDF toolchain and all necessary dependencies required for programming ESP32 in C programming language. If you are subscribed to my channel, you have probably know that I have already made one video about setup ESP IDF. That video is pretty straightforward, but in the comments I saw that even if some guys have succeeded to set everything up, some still weren't that lucky. I think that the main reason for that guys fails to install ESP IDF by following steps described in that video is because I said that they need to install latest version of Ubuntu even if I have used Ubuntu 19.04 in that video. I guess that they try to follow my steps on newer Ubuntu version instead of version that I have used. So now I need to mention at the beginning of this video that for this tutorial you must to install the same version of Ubuntu as me and that is the version 20.04.1. To download this version you can go and search for download Ubuntu desktop and click on the first link. If the latest version is 20.04.1 you can go straight to download link. But if they are not, then you can go to releases.ubuntu.com and search for it, in this list. When you find it, click and then, from the list below, download desktop AMD64 ESO image, which is around 2.6 GB. I'm gonna to use the same infrastructure as in the previous video. Ubuntu will be installed as a virtual machine by using Oracle VirtualBox and my host system will be Windows 10. So open VirtualBox and click on new. For name I will go with Ubuntu 20.04. Type is Linux and version is Ubuntu 64 bit. In this step I will assign 4 GB of RAM to my Ubuntu and click next. This is new virtual machine so I want to create new hard disk now. VDI is good type for hard disk so click next. HDD space will be dynamically allocated and for the maximum size I will put 20 G. Now go to VM settings and click on storage item in the left menu. Click on IDE controller disk where it says empty and on the right side click on the CD icon. From drop down click on choose a disk file and find your downloaded Ubuntu ESO image. When you have attached ESO image you can go and start machine. On starting you will be prompt to confirm that you want to boot up system from the ESO image and in the combo box choose Ubuntu ESO file. Click start to run Ubuntu installation. In this first step choose desired language, I suggest you to go with English. In the next step choose your keyboard layout. Because I will use this machine only for coding ESP32 I can go with minimal installation in this step and this checkbox for downloading updates while installing Ubuntu can be left checked. Click continue and in the next step choose to erase your virtual disk and install Ubuntu on it. Click install now. Choose your location for daytime purposes and in the next step type your basic informations for login. Click continue and you can chill next 5 minutes while your Ubuntu is installing. After 5 minutes message about installation success will be shown and you can restart machine. On next startup Ubuntu will say that you need to detach your ESO image. So go to machine, settings, storage. As you can see VirtualBox has already detached ESO file so we don't need to do anything here. Just close this settings and press enter. After couple of seconds you can log in into your Ubuntu. This is welcome screen for the first Ubuntu usage. So you can go skip next 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 done. As you can see dimensions of this machine window are very small and you will probably want to increase them. For that you need to go to view virtual screen 1 and as you can see all resolutions are disabled. Let's fix that quickly. Open activities from the bottom left corner and search for terminal. 
Once when terminal is open up, you can right click on this icon and add it to favorites. That will stick terminal to this left vertical bar, so you don't need to search for it every time. Ok, we want to increase resolution, so open terminal and execute next command. Execution is done. Close terminal and go to devices and click on the insert guest additions CD image. After you type your password, Ubuntu will run some commands to install necessary packages for enabling VM resolutions. When execution is done, we can reboot Ubuntu now simply by opening terminal and type reboot. Go again to view, virtual screen 1 and now all resolutions are available. I will go with 1600 by 900. Oh yes, that is much better. When you have fresh installed Ubuntu, before anything else, it is good to upgrade all packages which is upgradable at that moment. Command for that is simple. sudo apt update and end sudo apt upgrade dash y. After 2 or 3 minutes, depending on your internet speed, update process is done and we are ready to rock. First package needed for ESP IDF is Python. To be more precise, Python 3 is recommended. Python 3 comes pre-installed on Ubuntu starts with version 20.04. Ok, let's check what is Python version. Wait, 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 wait. Command Python not found. Yup, that's right. Now when you want to use Python command, you need to use Python 3 and Python 3.8.2 is installed. By the way, if you get here some message like Python 3 is not installed, you can install them by typing next command sudo apt install y python3. Because ESP IDF use Python as a command for invoking Python, we need to make Python 3 as a default interpreter. That is possible by simply linking command python to command python3. With which python3 command I will check where is the python3 located. Now with update alternatives command I will create a new link on the path usr bin python with the name python. That will forward all invokes to the python3. If we now check version of python, we will get the version of python3. The same thing is with Python Package Manager aka PIP. PIP is not PIP anymore, it is PIP3 and to install it we need to execute next command sudo apt install y python3 pip. After installation we can check the version of PIP by typing pip3 y. As I did for Python, I will now create default link for PIP3. Command for update alternatives is same as before, only in this case I am writing PIP instead of Python. We can see now that version for PIP3 and PIP packages are the same. Next packages required for ESP IDF smooth work are git, we get, flex, bison, gperf, python setup tools, cmake, ninja build, ccache, libffii, libssl, dfu util. After the execution is done, with cd I'm gonna to home folder. There I will create new folder with name esp and cd inside of it. When I'm inside of esp folder, now I can invoke git clone command for cloning the latest version of official esp idf repository. Don't forget to write down this recursive flag. After about 5 minutes, cloning process is done and now I will go inside of newly cloned esp idf folder. First thing that we need to do now is to run installation script by typing next command dot space dot slash install dot sh if you get this warning after installation that pip is not up to date you can execute next command pip install dash dash upgrade pip 
Now we have successfully installed the latest version of PIP. Because ESP IDF needs a lot of environment variables, there are ready to use shell script to export all that variables. All what we need to do is to execute next command dot space dot slash export dot sh. With print env command we can take a look on all environment variables at this moment and as we can see there is all ESP IDF bars like IDF tools and so on but check this out. If I close terminal and open it again by executing print env we can see that all ESP bars are gone. That means executing export.sh script works only for one terminal session and for building ESP32 applications we need to execute it every time when we open new terminal. What? Well, here is solution. With next command open profile script and append next line to the bottom of this script. In short, this profile script will be executed every time when we log in into Ubuntu account and export.sh will be invoked automatically. Now, with next command, I will grant permissions to my user for accessing serial ports. Actually, I need to add my user to dialout and TTI groups. I need to do that because ESP IDF needs that permission for flashing binary files into ESP32 over the serial port. In order to making serial port from host machine, in this case Windows 10, visible in virtual machine, we need to make USB filter. So, first I will turn off this virtual machine. Take your ESP32 and plug it in into PC. Go to virtual machine settings. Under USB, click on this mini USB plus icon and then choose Silicon Labs CP2102 USB to UART bridge controller. If you haven't this item in your list, you probably don't have installed driver on your PC. To do that, you can simply search for 210X driver and from the official Silicon Labs website download and install it. Ok, once when you add new USB filter to your virtual machine, click OK and start it again. To see the list of all serial ports, I will execute next command ls slash dev slash tty star. To search ESP32 serial port, we need to search for USB in the name. And here it is, tty usb0. Easier way to check if ESP is connected with Ubuntu is to execute next command ls slash dev slash tty usb star. If you get here empty result instead of this, that means the ESP32 is not connected with machine. Ok, now what is only left to do is to make the ESP32 project. Go to desktop folder. Let's check if ESP IDF environment variables are existing in this terminal session. So, print env and yes, there are all wars, which means that our profile script works good. For this video, I will not write any new ESP32 application, but instead, I will copy hello world example from the ESP IDF folder, and you can do the same. After execution of this command, you can see the copy of the Hello World app here on the desktop. With CD, go into Hello World folder. With next command, we need to inform compiler that our project is ESP32 project and not ESP32 S2. Now execute idf.py menu config and you can leave all as default here. Press S for save. Enter for confirm save location and then escape for leave configuration menu. Now all is ready for building and I will execute idf.py build command. After about 2 minutes building process is done. Don't worry, this takes long time only for the first build because compiler needs to build all ESP IDF modules included into your project. Every other build will be faster, because in that case compiler will build only your code and all other previously built modules will be just linked. Now is only left to flash application into ESP32. 
For that, we have this command idf.py p name of your port flash. If you forget the name of your serial port, you can execute next command anytime and find out. Well, this is my port and probably yours as well. Don't forget that before executing flash command, we need to put ESP32 into programming mode. Take ESP32, press and hold boot, click reset once, release boot. ESP32 is in programming mode now and after flashing it will automatically leave this mode. Now we can flash idf.py dash p slash dev slash tty usb0. As we can see, application has been successfully flashed into ESP32 and to see what ESP32 sent to our serial port, we can execute idf.py monitor. We can see that all strings from Hello World application are shown in terminal. That means we have successfully set up ESP IDF environment, built and then flashed application into ESP32. With that, we came to the end of this video. I hope it will be useful for you guys. Till the next time, happy coding and see ya! Bye!